We've been focusing our energies on reducing carbon dioxide emissions, but what if there was a way of decreasing said emissions by redistributing them? The people at Planetary Technologies have come up with a brilliant new idea of involving oceans in this battle against climate change. Keep watching to know more. First up, a new idea to counter climate change. Rising carbon dioxide emissions don't seem to be going anywhere, while scientists and environmental activists push to bring about a reduction in the these emissions. They keep going up and up despite all our efforts. In 2021, the global emissions increased by a total of 6%, which happens to translate to around 36.3 billion tons. That is way too much carbon up in our skies. Our planet's in a state of extreme crisis, and these rising emissions will make things worse, not just in the coming months, but in the coming years as well. So instead of brainstorming ideas ideas on how to reduce emissions, what if we focused on redistribution of those carbon emissions to somewhere else? Hold up, you must be thinking, is that even possible? That sounds a little confusing, but don't worry, we'll break it down for you in simpler terms. Planetary Technologies has used this very idea for their new tech that went ahead to win the $1 million X Prize Carbon Removal Milestone Award. Planetary Technologies is now going to use the funding to further develop this latest technology so that it can be used to help us save our planet. It offers quite a sustainable solution to our growing climate problems. Next, we have the new technology at Planetary Technologies. You must be wondering what the specifics of this technology are. Well, fret not, we're going to dive into that right now. The idea here is to take carbon from our atmosphere and store it in the oceans. These oceans take up 70% of Earth's surface. So it seems Seems like a pretty good storage room for all that carbon floating around in our atmosphere. The oceans are great carbon sinks. We'll explain exactly what that means in a bit. And it'll be such a shame if we don't utilize this natural storehouse to combat the climate crisis we're facing at hand. The oceans naturally sequester carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And we can speed up that process with the help of this new technology. This innovative technology aims to convert waste produced in mining fields into a milder, non-toxic form which can be used as an antacid. It's being called an antacid to help explain the idea behind the project. Basically, antacids go inside your stomach and absorb all the harmful acids. It's the same here with the ocean in the picture instead of your stomach. The antacid will be released into the ocean through different outfalls such as wastewater or stormwater streams. The precise quantity of the product being released into the ocean will be carefully calculated and monitored to prevent the ecosystem from going into a shock. Just like how a doctor prescribes a particular dose for a medication, the same rule applies here to these antacids for the ocean. The antacid, when blended with the ocean's water, helps restore the pH levels of the ocean while also catalyzing the ocean's natural carbon sequestration process. This is not all that this technology is capable of. Other than countering acidification of the ocean and helping redistribute the carbon in our atmosphere, it's contributing to the production of green hydrogen while also cleaning up mine wastage. An incredibly brilliant four-in-one solution indeed. Quite what we need in these troubling times. And now, carbon sinks explained. Anything that takes in more carbon from the atmosphere compared to the amount it releases into the environment is termed a carbon sink. Forests and oceans are the best examples of this. In this way, nature already plays a role in helping with the ongoing climate crisis. The reason why the climate keeps getting worse and worse each year is that we're destroying the very facilities nature has gifted us with. Wildfires are burning entire forests to the ground, and the oceans are filling up with more and more plastic as the years go by. This is disrupting the natural ways of things. If we end up destroying these precious resources, the solution to climate change will slip right through our fingers. These natural carbon sinks have the ability to accumulate carbon in the form of different chemical compounds. Not only that, but they can also store it for a pretty long time. The carbon taken up by the oceans and other different bodies of water is referred to as blue carbon. Different water ecosystems, such as algae, sea grasses, salt marshes, and mangroves absorb carbon for plant growth. Moreover, the organic carbon
carbon stored in dead plants and animals is consumed by various bacteria found in the ocean. These dead organisms eventually sink to the bottom of the ocean, where they're converted into sediments containing vast deposits of limestone and chalk. Let's talk about how exactly sediments contribute to carbon sequestration on the ocean floor. And now, sediments as stores for carbon. The only way to store organic carbon in oceans is if it completes its journey to the bottom of the ocean and gets entirely covered by a layer of sediment. Buried environments have incredibly low levels of oxygen. This means that tiny bacteria which feed on organic matter and produce carbon dioxide are unable to do so in these environments. As a result, the carbon stays trapped in those deep sea sediments. Any organic material that sinks but isn't deeply buried is subject to decomposition. This decomposition by the bacteria leads to the formation of carbon dioxide, which is then released back into the environment. So there it is. For carbon to be successfully sequestered into the oceans, the rate of burial for these sediments must be greater than the rates of decomposition. Otherwise, all that carbon goes back into the atmosphere and we're back to square one. Up next, ocean restoration, the need of the hour. We've established how important oceans are for our environment. However, despite their importance, they're facing threats that need to be addressed. Plastic waste is thrown into the seas without any care. This harms so many ecosystems and marine animals. Coral reefs are being damaged due to climate change. Overfishing and nutrient pollution is leading to the formation of dead zones. All of this is harming our oceans. Amidst this change, we must strive to restore our oceans and bring balance back to them. We need to decrease the pressure on marine ecosystems and give them a chance to recover, both naturally and otherwise, such as by transplanting important species. Our governments and communities should come together in this mission to restore our oceans. Some things that we can do include turning fish into a more sustainable activity and to prevent various pollutants from entering our oceans. We can build coastal cities, but it should be kept in mind that such cities should offer protection to existing coastal ecosystems rather than replace them completely. Plans must be made to actively restore the coral reef, mangroves, and seagrasses, all vital components of the marine environment. New initiative technologies might be able to restore our ocean to their days of former glory. We have the tools and we have the resources. All that we need to do now is invest in technologies that will help us move forward in our mission to reverse the damage that we've inflicted on not just the oceans, but this planet as well. Finally, we have Planetary Technologies' mission to curb climate change. With this new technology at its fingertips, Planetary Technologies plans on addressing the problem of removing carbon from the air. The vice president of external relations at the company, Jason Vallis, mentioned how we're in need of a three-tiered approach when it comes to tackling climate change. The approach includes adaptation, reduction in emissions, and removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Planetary ocean restoration technology will help reduce the increased pH levels of the ocean. This acidification of the ocean is a direct consequence of climate Climate change, and it has greatly disrupted marine life. By aiming to decrease the ocean's acidity, Planetary's latest tech will help restore marine life. Moreover, this technology results in the formation of green hydrogen as a byproduct. Green hydrogen can be utilized by different industries as a source of fuel and can help decrease the dependence of said industries on fossil fuels. It's produced by splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen is used as an energy source while the oxygen goes into the atmosphere. Sounds infinitely better than burning coal and drilling for oil. Other than that, Planetary's new tech can extract materials from the waste produced at mines. This metal can be used for making batteries. It's a great investment into an electric-powered future as well. So many solutions. Their technology is under testing in various labs across the globe. Later this year, they're pretty ambitious about running larger ocean trials to see how effective the technology really is. Sounds good in theory so far, and hopefully it'll come through when put to trial. The company's set on redistributing one gigaton of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into the oceans. They'll start working on this once the technology's finalized. With the right support, they're going to achieve all these goals and more. Cheers to a better future for our planet. That's a wrap for this video. Want to know more about ocean restoration technology?
technologies? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.